Hey, welcome back to Turntable Guy. On the bench today, we have a Riga P8, which is a, a very high-end turntable. And uh, to go on this turntable, we're going to be installing a brand new Ortofon 2M Bronze. Um, also, we're going to give the Riga just a, a lubrication service, nothing major. Set up the arm uh, and uh, check out the belt. I've already had a look at it. It looks a little loosey-goosey to me. Uh, I know Riga belts usually run a little loose, but that one just seems a little bit looser than normal. Um, and if you have a look at this belt, it's got a little hump. So, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Yeah, it's got a little hump here. Um, and it doesn't look like the turntable was used very much. The belt itself looks a little dirty. And um, this is the white belt. And... Um, you can just see there it's just a little oblong right there so i'm just gonna uh, heat that up in a little bit of warm water just to see if i can get it back into shape and uh, maybe contract the belt just a little bit the elasticity back um, and then we'll just clean it with a little bit of alcohol um, probably best idea at this point would be to get a new belt this one's really dirty for some reason um this one has the uh, acrylic platter now I'm not sure if it comes from the factory with an acrylic platter or if it comes with a glass platter if you know uh, by all means uh, uh, send me a message down in the uh, the comments section um, but that's what's on this turntable um, and as you can see this is a very interesting design it's got these uh, upper and lower braces the p3 has that as well I guess the p6 was would as well um, just to uh, increased rigidity and um, it's got a, uh, an, a cast aluminum sub platter and uh, we're going to be changing, changing out the oil on that. I'll show you how to do that even though it does seem to have a decent amount of oil in there as you can see the sub platter going down nicely but we're going to change it out because we're doing a service and we'll just put a few drops of, uh, of oil on the motor and uh, let's get going on this. It does have the external power supply and some high-end uh, Riga cables here. Let's just say here. Uh, the Riga low capacitance, high performance audio cables, phono cables. So, all right. But uh, I think what we'll do is uh, let's do the cartridge first. Like I mentioned, it's a brand new Ortofon bronze. It hasn't even been opened up yet. Uh, he picked this up uh, as a Black Friday sale. I guess these were, I don't know where he got it, but uh, it was 350 bucks, And that is a, a really good price for this cartridge. I think they would normally go for around 600 bucks Canadian. Um, so there it is. That's the 2M bronze. So it has the, uh, the improved coils. Um, the body would be identical to that of the black. Just the stylus is better on the black. That's the nice bronze cartridge. It is a it is a lovely sounding cartridge. And that will come with all the mounting hardware. Um, on here right now, on this table, uh, there is a, uh, a Riga. I don't know if it's a lease or what it is, but it has the three-point mounting system here. And uh, one thing about you know, if you are installing a Riga cartridge, is that you can't get the alignment wrong because of the three-point mounting system. So it's got uh, three screws that go right into the body, and you're 100% aligned for, for Riga. So we are going to have to align our new Ortofon, and I'll be using a, a Riga protractor to do that. But uh, in the meantime, why don't we uh, zoom in just a little bit. Or maybe... Maybe I'll try uh, a side view here so we can see how I do the cartridge. Hang on one sec. Okay, we're going to try this view. And it's not optimal, but... Let's give you a side view of that cartridge. Yeah, lean that in a little bit more. Hopefully it doesn't fall over while I'm doing this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to uninstall our Rega. And uh, these cartridges do not have removable head shells, so you are working 100% with 
with the uh, tone arm in place and on the tone arm so it is more difficult that third screw. The cartridge should be free now. now I like to remove these uh, connections here after I've removed the cartridge from the head shell. I just find I can get my hand on here and I have better control over the wires. And uh, you don't need a lot of pressure. Just gently pull on them. Because I have seen people rip these right out and damage the head shell wires, right? So, looks like these are pure copper. They're not gold plated. That's interesting. Okay, that's it. There's our cartridge. Uh, I don't know what kind of cartridge this is. It's definitely a Rega, but uh, I'm not sure. I think he mentioned Elise. That's, I could be wrong, so... So we're just going to put this aside safely and we're going to get our Ortifon. The beauty of the Ortifon cartridge is that um, the screws go right into the head shell and you don't need any nuts. So it's uh, pretty easy to mount. Okay, oh, you get a neat little, uh, I think that's a weight tool there. So you can set up your, uh, your tracking weight. You get a brush, a screwdriver, and a set of, looks like four screws. So I'm just going to get some screws out here. Don't need the screwdriver or the weight. And we'll use the shorter screws. So it's as simple as this. Here's the back of the Ortifon. Color coordination there. White and red. Green and blue. Okay. So, I usually like to start with the far side, so I'll put the uh, green one on first. And then the blue one. And then we'll do our white. And finally our red. Okay, so there is our tone arm wires all attached. I have not removed the uh, stylus because I've got the stylus protector on there right now. So I'm just going to grab a screw. And drop it in. And why don't we use our new Ortifon screwdriver. And we'll just loosely attach those for now. Just to where this cartridge is snug in the head shell. Because we're going to need to move that around soon. Now, if you don't have a Rega protractor, what Rega recommends is the center of the third hole on the head shell is where you want to line your stylus up. So if we remove the stylus guard, you'd want to line up the tip of the stylus to the center of the hole, okay? So that's how you would, uh, so you want 
tip of the stylus, center of that, uh, that front hole is, is aligned. But we're going to use a protractor. And I guess to do the protractor, I can put you back up on the uh, camera mount. Let's just have a look here at the uh, two in bronze. Wiring all hooked up. And uh, there's that center hole I was talking about. Okay, so all right. Well, let's uh, let's pause and I'll get back on the mount and we'll uh, align our cartridge. Okay, welcome back. We've got the uh, Riga Stevenson uh, protractor on the uh, P8 here, and we've got our cartridge there. And uh, I like to uh, reduce the tracking force to very, very, very light, just enough so the needle sets down but doesn't put any pressure on the paper when I'm doing this. Um, I also turn the anti-skating off, which is done by pulling the anti-skating out all the way on this arm. So as you can see here, we've got uh, three points, one, two, and three. Um, the first thing you want to do is you want to bring your uh, tone arm over and you want to get the cartridge as square as possible in this grid. And what we want to do is get our stylus point right on the X, so to speak. Now, once you've done that, we should have a perfect arc. So we should hit up with uh, point C here and point C here. Um, and the stylus should follow this perfect arc through the record. And that is the Stevenson uh, uh, protractor, right? That's, that's how it is supposed to follow the arc of the record to provide you with the best tracking and hopefully lowest distortion for a rig, a tone arm. So the first thing we want to do is we want to bring our cartridge over. And I'm going to eyeball this and I'm going to drop it down. Okay. And I need lots of light for this. And I'm just going to move it over just a smidge because I'm not quite in the uh, X. Okay. Now we are. That's in the X. So what I want to look at now is I want to see how square that cartridge is in that grid, right? So Unfortunately, the 2M series is kind of angular. It's got all these weird, funky angles, as you can see from just this cap here. Um, so it's a little harder to align, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get there. But, uh, you know, it's kind of funny because I lined this up, just eyeballed it, and I'm pretty close right now. So if I, if I bring this over, I'm almost dead center in that C, and I'm almost dead center in that one. So I'm not far off, which means that... Uh, that was a pretty good guess. So, um, so I'm going to uh, lift this up, and then what I'll do is I'll loosen these screws a little bit and just turn the cartridge a little bit inwards. And uh, I'm going to pause and come right back and see how that worked. All right, I've been going at this for about you know, five minutes or so, and uh, the cartridge the cartridge definitely wants to be further back. The screws just about I would say just a millimeter or so back from center point um, and even in the head shell um, and now I've got what I think is a perfect alignment as I move it over here we hit C1 or C and then C1 over here dead on and you can see your perfect arc throughout the record so our brand new Ortofon Browns is aligned so I'm going to tighten up those screws and I'm going to pause and then we'll be back to do a lubrication service Okay, lubrication service. Let's remove our belt again. We will take off our subladder. It's a lovely piece of aluminum, much nicer than the cheap plastic ones that come in, I guess, the P1 through P3. So, but you can buy a nice aftermarket uh, aluminum uh, subplatters from a lot of good quality aftermarket companies. Okay, this is no different than any other turntable that doesn't cost like I think five thousand dollars like this one does so you just want to uh, wow is there any lube in here at all you want to get your uh, q-tip in here I'm just doing it dry right now I just there's no lube in here none 
totally dry. So let's uh, use a little alcohol just to make sure it's nice and clean. Don't need a lot of alcohol. Just make sure you clean the sides all the way down and the base. Get what's remaining of that oil. And that's about it. And then we'll just dry it up a little bit. And on the uh, on the uh, sub platter, you just want a little bit of alcohol. Okay, you just want to you want to clean off the axle here. Keep that nice and clean, just like that. And while you're at it, clean off where the belt rides. Put that aside, and now we can lubricate. So, Riga turntables. You guys know the drill. You have a Riga. You have to use a synthetic gear oil. Okay. Um, this is actually 75 W90. It's synthetic. This is Shell brand. Okay. It's a synthetic 75 W90 uh, and. Uh, I like to put a couple drops in here. This stuff is really thick. A couple drops down there. Oh, what the hell? Let's put three. And then I like to put a few drops on the axle of the spindle here. Doop. And uh, gently let that go down. Now, if you've overfilled it, like I do 90% of the time, it will take its mother-loving time going down, but it will go down. What you're trying to do is get the air out. And there you go. Out it has come. And there we go. Don't expect a Rega sub bearing or sub platter to spin like crazy. Okay, the oil is thick and heavy, um, but it provides a very thick film as well. So that is that. Now, lastly, is the belt. So like I mentioned, this belt is a little bit uh, dirty, which is very weird. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to put this in some warm water for a little bit and just see if I can get it back to its natural shape. Like I said, it's a little there's a little bit of a bulge here. So we're, see if we can get that out and we'll we'll clean it with alcohol and uh, we'll do that in a minute. I'm just going to put a drop of oil on the motor base here. So you just need one drop right at the base. That's it. And then also, grab a Q-tip with some alcohol and just clean where the belts ride, where the belt rides for 45 and for 33. Okay. You just want to clean those two spots there on the spindle. And done. All right. So I'm going to take care of this belt. I'll be right back. All right, so I did a little bit of belt boiling, put that in the microwave for five minutes. And as you can see, the hump is now gone, all right? Just uh, does enough to, to uh, just bring it back. You know, it's, it's nice, a little bit of heat, right? So we're just gonna clean it with a little alcohol because it was a little dirty too. I'm just gonna clean that. 
a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel and get any uh, guck off of it. Let's see. Nah, not too bad. All right, so that's good now. So we can put that back. And uh, it's still a little loose. But uh, like I mentioned, Riga belts do run a little bit loose. They're not really tight because when you put it on the 45 notch, which sticks out a little further, it tightens up a little bit. So we will test our speed. We don't need this anymore. We'll get our speed test disc and we will get our power supply. So this is the uh, p 8 power supply. This is called TTPSU. So it runs on 24 volt AC. And uh, this cord here plugs into it. It looks like a uh, DIN cord of some sort. Almost looks like an S-Video cord. So we'll just plug that into the back here. I guess, you know what, I when I said about the notches on the, the motor, you don't have to do it with this one because the power supply controls the speed. Okay, so that's plugged in. Let's plug our power in. Okay, and uh, power, and that's 33. Let's see, it takes a little bit to get up to speed. Flatter's kind of heavy. And as you can see, if you can see, it is right on. There's 45. Again, right on. So that is perfect. Just leave it at 33. Oh, I think I turned it off. That's okay. We have to set up our um, anyway. So our speed's good. So now let's set up our tone arm. Just zoom out just a bit here. Okay. Now remove your stylish protector. And we're going to want to get a zero balance here. So we're going to want to rotate our counterweight until our arm is floating in midair. Actually, I should turn this to zero. There we go. Yep. And our anti skating is out all the way, so it's at zero. And maybe just a smidge light. Just a touch. There we go. So that is zero balance right there. And we'll check it with our digital scale as well. Okay, so we'll put our arm back. Lock that. And the tracking force for the uh, 2M bronze is one and a half grams. I believe that's one. That's two. Is there a half mark on here? Not really. I'm going to have to set this by eye or by uh, with our uh, our scale. Get our one and a half grams here. Let's see how close I was by setting it by eye. Oh, not bad, eh? 1.54. Pretty close. We'll just dial this back a smidge. And 1.51. I'm going to say that's awesome. Oh, man. 1.52. All right, let's see if we can hit it right in the nose. There we go. 1.5. All right. Anti skating, we'll put it in. Actually, there's no notches on this thing. 
Oh, Rega, why do you drive me nuts the way you do? All right, so if that's full out two, we'll go one and a half there. Look up our sound cables. No ground, it's internally grounded. If these even fit on my... Uh, On my cables here. Jesus, what the heck is going on with these? I cannot get them to go into my couplers here. Holy crap. I'm pretty sure these are not tightened. Are they tightened on? No, they are. Sorry. Didn't realize they were that kind. You gotta loosen them first. But the Okay, let's try that again, right, oh that's better, and left, okay that's what we want, all right, let me uh, pause, I don't want to put a piece of crap record on this table, okay, let's turn our motor back on. So I always listen to that first track on this record because it has a trombone and then some strings and they hold a really steady note and I like to listen for wow and flutter and that was very nice and stable. have it there's the rega p8 this is a very expensive turntable uh, i'm actually going to throw it in my system tonight just to listen to it just a little bit i want to hear how it sounds against my tech 12 um, maybe next video if i uh, if i notice anything really superior about this i'll let you know but until then uh, that's how you install a cartridge on this turntable uh, we put a brand new ortofon browns we uh, did a service on it uh, we uh, lubricated the motor we put fresh oil in our main bearing and we set up the arm and this turntable is ready to go. Thanks again, guys, for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye.